everybody, I'm going to talk to you today about shapes and patterns. We're going to start by looking at some of the shapes that we've already learnt together in foundation this year. And we're going to look at just 2D shapes. 2D means two dimensional. If you remember, we said that that meant they were flat. You can't pick them up, they're not solid. So it's, for example, something drawn on a piece of paper. Our first two dimensional shape is this one. Okay, this is the one we're going to look at today. And this one is called, can you remember? That's right, it's a circle. And a circle has just one side that goes around and around. Okay, it has no corners, so no pointy sticky out bits. It just has one curved side. The next shape I'm going to show you is this one. Can you tell me what it is? Are you ready? Well done. This shape has one, two, three, four sides. It has one, two, three, four corners. And the sides are all the same length. We don't have two long ones and two short ones. We have four that are all equal. So this shape is a square. Are you ready for the next one? Have a think, what shape is this? You said triangle, well done. We know it's a triangle because it has one, two, three sides. It has one, two, three corners. So it makes it a triangle. You're really good at that one. Right, here's our next one. And I want you to think really carefully about this one because this one has two different names. But if you remember in our class, we've been um, practicing which name we should be using for this one. So have a good look. Here we go. Okay, so what shape is this? What two dimensional shape can you see on your screen? So we have got two, one, two long sides. We've got one, two shorter sides. There are one, two, three, four corners. Have you got it? It begins with an O. It's oblong, well done. If you said rectangle, you're still right because this is a type of rectangle. But a square is also a type of rectangle. So we use the word oblong to make sure we know the difference between this one and this one. Fantastic, well done. Okay, so this week in White Rose Maths, all your activities are linked to this wonderful Julia Donaldson book, The Snail and the Whale. And obviously our main character, the snail, has a beautiful spiral shell. Be able to have a quick look. We can see here, look, his shell down here is a beautiful spiral. And today, your first challenge is, can you draw a spiral? So I want you to get a piece of paper or a piece of card. You can use an old cereal box if you've got one. And I want you to draw your own spiral. Now you have to hold your pencil or pen nicely with your grip. And we put the pen or pencil in the middle of the paper to begin with and we start going around and we get wider Ooh, and wider and we keep going until we've got a fabulous big spiral like that. See if you can take your time, make sure the lines don't cross. I'm sure yours will look better than mine because you'll be able to keep it nice and neat with the width the same as it goes around. Once you've done your spiral, what you now need to do is you need to use a pair of children's scissors, make sure a grown-up is with you to help you with that, and you're going to cut it out. So starting at the outside of your spiral, I've done mine already as you can see, you're just going to cut all the way along your lines right up until you get into the middle, 
And then if you lift the middle bit up, you've made a spiral hanger, which you can hang either in your house or in your garden. Look at that. And the scissor skills that you're going to use, your cutting skills, are really going to help those muscles that we like to develop for all our other skills in school and in life, particularly holding those pencils and using our pencils to write and draw with. So see if you can make a snail spiral for me today. I'd like to look forward to seeing those. Another way in which you can use a spiral is you can get um, a wrap or a crepe and put some nice sandwich filling in it, maybe some jam, some chocolate spread, some Nutella, some um, peanut butter, whatever you like to eat at home, whatever your grown-ups happy for you to use. And then you're going to roll your wrap up and keep rolling it and keep rolling it and keep rolling it until it forms a really nice um, cylinder shape, okay? And then if you look at the end, you should see that it's formed a nice spiral like that. Another thing that you could make is a Swiss roll or a roulade and you'll see the same spiral pattern in that. And if you cut some slices out of what you've made, you'll have lots of little spiral shapes that look a bit like snails. And you can use that if you want to, to do some really brilliant subtraction or take away. And that's your next challenge for today. We're going to think about taking away and we're going to start really simple because we haven't done any taking away in school or we've not done very much um, subtraction was something on the summer term plan for foundation two so it is something quite new to some of you so we'll start really really simple i suggest starting with really small numbers for take away and we're going to first of all count how many there are at the beginning so here I have some snails. Let's have a look. How many have I got? Remember, we're going to count from left to right and we're going to touch them as we count. One, two, three. Got three snails all together. If I take one snail away, how many do I have now? So subtracting, remember, means taking it away. So here it goes. Off he goes. He's gone. So I had three snails. How many do I have now that I've taken one away? Let's see. One, two. So three, take away one, equals two. See if you can have a go at doing some takeaways. You can do it using your um, food, like I suggested. You could do it using pictures, like I've got here with bits of blue tack on, or you can do it using objects. Objects is a brilliant way to be able to do takeaway at home. But see if you can get a small number of objects, so something below 10, line them up in a row, and then see if you can count them, and then take one away. How many do you have left now? Good luck. I know you'll do brilliantly. See you tomorrow for more maths. Bye-bye.